and welcome to another episode of Writing Fighting. So I've been gone for a while. I had to go to the States. My dad passed away and I had to look after some things there. This is a 14th century Italian sword simulator. It's a simulator because it's not sharp, but it's a pretty good model of one. Uh, it looks like a sword. It acts like a sword. And I just want to briefly say uh, it's long, but still short enough to draw clear of a scabbard in a single pull with one hand. I can easily use it to fight one-handed, right? It's better in two hands and the bottom hand goes on the pommel. And then I can do all kinds of things and I can do them faster and with more accuracy, but I can use it with one hand. By 1520, a long sword looks like this. So let's just hold them up together. It's a much bigger sword. The quillins are slightly wider and sometimes they're much wider. The blade is a solid four inches longer and it could be longer than that. And the hilt is much longer. The length of the hilt allows me to deliver a much more powerful blow because my hands are farther apart and that's a fulcrum and all that mathematical stuff. The longer blade allows me a much longer thrust and a heavier cut, adding to the power of my two hands. But here's the thing. This is one of the biggest swords that people will ever carry. And yet, here I am, the old epee fencer that I used to be, quite happy to use it one-handed. This is a beautifully balanced simulator, but the real ones are beautifully balanced and it just doesn't weigh that much. Another thing, <clears throat> standard sort of myth and legend says that the longsword is slow and the rapier is fast. But in fact, in period, people thought of these as rapier killers. In fact, you were confidently, with a good longsword, supposed to be able to take on two or three people with rapiers, which are the equivalent of a Saturday night special trying to stare down an AK-47.